Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So drum roll, we have our new prompt, a vessel. Hmm, well, I've been running through the house. Hello Fudge. I've been running through the house grabbing all sorts of things because I've got an idea and I think it's going to work and it's going to finish a project that I haven't yet finished as well. I can't believe it. So back it up, Corinne. She's a little excited. She needs to calm down. If you recall, back in March, when I went to Ballarat for Susanna's retreat, I made a set of flowers for her and myself. Now, these flowers are based on a pattern that is in this book, Calico and Stitch, one of my favourite, favourite books. Uh, the only thing different I did is the odd petal had some of some stitching on it. Very much Jennifer Clouston inspired laying of different stitches and threads just to, you know, can't help myself. So I have these flowers and I haven't finished the project. Now, if I go in here and show you here, that's where the whole idea came from. Have I got enough flowers made? I don't know yet, but I've got at least five there. I haven't found a swanky, um, oh, look at these little girls. Oh, I'm seeing them popping up everywhere on Instagram and on quilts and they're just beautiful. Where are these flowers? So the principle is you assemble your flower using your stitches and fabric, and then you put a knitting needle through the center of them to hold them. Once again, I haven't found a swanky container. So as soon as the girl said vessel, I'm like, oh, a vase. What could I put in my vase? Flowers, finish the project and make something to hold my flowers. So let's put the book away and make some critical decisions on the size. Now, the other thing, sitting with the flowers were the dragonflies that I made, all very colourful and gorgeous, ready to go onto a project, haven't yet found a home. So I thought, oh, I'll just leave them nearby, maybe they might come in use. And then sitting on them was some little morsels of imagery printed on fabric that I was gifted at the Ballarat retreat by Vicky. Hello, Vicky. So I thought, well, they're all sitting together. Maybe there's my color scheme. I think these pieces, if you're wondering, I might be wrong. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. I think I've seen these on, um, is it Edith Holden that has the printed fabric with imagery? I don't know about those, but these i think she's i've got a christmas panel i'm sure oh, gee i hope i've got the right name if i'm wrong let me know in the comments if you recognize these let us all know because someone might want to go hunting for them oh. so i've got a bit of a gardening thing happening here i've got the plants uh, the the flowers i've got from the garden i don't mind that calendar too it's got potential and I love those seeds. I thought maybe they could be some elements on my vase. The other thing I've got is this fellow. Now he is um, also gifted to me when I was at the Fleur um, workshop, Deidre, beautiful. Her daughter works in the textile industry and she brought along bags of um, bits and pieces from her daughter and we all helped herself and she kept aside this bunny. Now, bunny has potential. Look, he matches beautifully. He gives me a colour palette that I like. If I stay within these tones, the flowers will pop. If I use him and add in colour, is another option, but I'm not sure. You know how it is with me. I need to hypothesize about every opportunity. Now, the next thing I've got to decide, so Bunny's definite possibility is my vase. So I went and grabbed that, which is a vase that comes when someone gives you a bunch of flowers. 
often a vase is included in the bouquet. So I've got two of these. One I use regularly because it just seems to be the right shape for flowers. And then I just went and grabbed a glass because A, I need a template pattern to build on. Fudgy, good morning. He's had his breakfast. Oh, I think he's gonna, what's he wanna jump up, does he? I might just pause the video because my table's full of bits and pieces and he's going to make a mess. Oh Back in goodness, second. guys, all hang broke loose. The fudge has jumped up right where all my pencils and pens and glue stick and like to the side of me is um, just general stuff that I might need if I'm videoing for you guys. And everything went fine. I knew he was coming in hot. That's why I was like, I better, better stop the video quickly before oh, a major incident happened. So where was I? Now I've got two containers. These I'm going to use as my template. The thing is I'm not sure what size is best suited. So what we might do is I'm going to put my inspiration away for a moment. I've got my flowers. Now I never finished those flowers. So I grabbed out before I filmed. These are my grandmother's, as in two, uh, needle sets. This one is my direct grandma from uh, my mum's side, the seamstress, Miss Lorna Rybot. That's her set. And Gary's step grandmother had a set as well, and I've inherited both of them. So, what I want to do is have a little look through and select the needles that I need to complete my flowers. I also grabbed a pokey tool while Fudge was destroying my workspace. And have a little think about what I can use. Now, oh, there's all sorts in here. There's even a hammer. Goodness me, what, what went, went down on the old crocheting and knitting side of things? I'd really like some timber ones, to be honest. And I don't think Grandma Brinebot, or his one, has timber in here. Oh, let's pull them out. Pull them out. I'm just trying to do it without... There's a timber one. Oh, look at those. They're flash. Broken. Why is that in there? Oh, she probably used it. Oh, she kept everything. There's the other timber one. I'm liking the idea of timber. And I know there's a set peeking out in Winifred's set. You can always come back through. See, there's little ones too. Oh my goodness. You always see them at thrift stores for some. Look, she's got little safety pins here. Oh. <sighs> Having a moment. Let's have a look in Winifred's. Yeah, I thought I saw some little timber ones. Holy macaroni. They're they're huge and they're missing the little stopper. Hmm. Maybe timber is not going to work for me unless I can come up with a way of putting something on there that they don't fall through. They're so big too. Do I want a massive hole? Maybe timber's not. Oh, there's another pokey tool. Keep that out. So Winifred had a pokey tool. That's this random plastic. Look at the little pearl ones. Aren't they sweet? In the photograph that uh, is in Calico and Stitch there, they're um, chrome. Aren't they sweet? The other thing is, isn't there a rule of when you pick a vase for your flowers, the vase is a certain portion. Don't you jump up again, fudgimus. Um, there's, a, there's a rule of thumb. Let me just Google it, guys. Okay. Bring out the beauty in your bouquets. The rule of thumb is to make your vase a third to a half of the height of the flower arrangement. I know, fudge. No one gives you flowers when you're having a whinge. He's, he's got attitude this morning. So a third to half. So that's roughly a third. 
some, you know, it looks, looks odd, but let's put a flower on a stick. And I'm thinking I can use the pokey tool. I have a little mark there where I've been considering my options, it would seem. No, Fudge. Go and find your father. You're becoming annoying. He wants somewhere. <laughs> he just went Row. a little groany. See, they're too big. Like, let go of the timber, girl. Put the timber away. They're like fence posts. We don't want fence posts. We want a dainty. Where are those little soft ones? Little. Oh, see, they're not them either. Oh my goodness, guys, one could have probably planned this prior to starting the video, but she doesn't. There are some funky ones in grandma's. Look at that one. Oh, what the hang's that on the end? Goodness me. I do like the colour. These are classic. Maybe I pick out these. Hang on. I think we've got something now. I think, are they in Winifred's too? No. Oh, my goodness. The girls, see, Australian English. So that might be why I've got... How many do I need? One, two, three, four. Okay. Maybe I'll use the green blue one. Turquoise. Oh, I tell you, there's now knitting needles falling on the ground. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, can't find it. Doesn't matter. Move on. Okay. Let's get Winifred's out of the way as well. I think this is about the right size. I love this turquoisey colour. Where's the one that I've... Fudge, please. Nice and firm, so that's good. Pokey tool and flower stem. Love the black. Fudge. He want he look the chair's not open. For goodness sakes, Fudge. Let's move the chair. So the cat has somewhere to sit. He's gonna get sin binned in a minute. He's been outside for about an hour, sitting in the sun. Like life's good for this cat. And now he's come in, had some breakfast, and is giving me attitude. Yeah, I like the colours of these. The timber ones would have been nice, but they're just, I like the fence post too, too much. This works with my colours. Okay, we are getting to the vessel guys <laughs> i've got now the cat's back up on the chair yes pussy oh here he comes oh my goodness hey fudge say hello to everyone see everyone thinks you're good you're a little angel but we all know here that the fudge has attitude so what the plan is is to use the glass vase or glass drinking cup as my template oh that's tight now we got watch out fudgy you gotta push that through budge and then fabricate my piece don't go that way oh seriously this cat guys i just need to let's give pussy a quick look into the camera hi say hello Look at him. Oh, Fudge. Why are you being naughty today? He's been taking a liking to going outside and just sitting in the sun of a morning and then again in the afternoon. He sleeps all day. So when I let him out now, he, he trots straight through the house to the garage door to please open it. I'm coming, coming through. I'm just going to try and find the, the matching one. See, there's some more there in those tones. 
I think I've made the right decision. I just want to find the other little apricot one. There's even a goldy coloured one in there too. I'll put those ones back. So we've got our four with stems now. Now we can make an educated decision about the size of our vessel. And I'm thinking that I will keep, I will keep the um, glass vessel inside my piece. Oops, what have I done? Have I broken? Yeah, I'm thinking for structure. And then let's say I wanted to put an actual bunch of flowers in the vessel. I've got a glass internal insert to protect my needlework is what I'm thinking. I'll definitely need more flowers. Right, look at that. Aren't they gorgeous? So beautiful. Now, this one, see that's too big. But I could extend them by putting something in the bottom because I need space to stitch. I can't be inhibited. So what if I was to scrunch something up into the bottom there? Even a little bit of sand or something. I've got walnut shell. And then I can make these bigger. Gosh, then I'd need 30 of the things. Or maybe not. Maybe I could come up with other foliage. Hand stitched foliage. Oh my goodness, there's another project. Yeah, I'm thinking. I think I'm going to go the bigger one. And just pad up the bottom. Gives me more area to stitch. I can create more flowers. If I go the smaller one. It's pretty good. Like it's half. But I like the idea of a big bouquet. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I don't think I can. Maybe if I did a second one, I could go this one. But if I decided to do, yeah, no, it has to be the bigger one, I think. I like the idea that I've got a shape. That's a challenge for me. We're going to need to fit it. So Mr. Bunny here will work as a, a feature on my piece. So how are we going to do this? We need some calico, which I grabbed. And we're going to pretend this is a model. I'm going to turn it up that way before it hits the deck. The cat's left the room. He No, he's gone back to bed. He's had his breakfast. He's said hello and he's settled in for the day. Good, because he was causing trouble. So let's pretend this is a beautiful shapely model and the seamstress is making a dress. So I'm thinking we need some darts to get our shape. And I think... Oops, went a bit too far. That's okay. So, you know, the rule, don't measure if you don't have to because that just gives you wriggle room. <laughs> yeah, that's plenty. So, if I was a seamstress and this shapely lady was here, I would pin to the outside of her and then turn it the other way. So let's try that. I don't know if this will work, but to me, in my head, I think I'd get the shape of her body by doing this. We need some little well-placed darts. At the end of the day, it's going to be a very organic organic piece so 
I don't want to overthink it just yet. Okay, I like that. So let's go a little bit further and let's get the other side of her hips. <laughs> Might go a little bit closer to the dart than I actually thought. So she's getting a dart here. Now the question is, do I do this twice, inside, outside? Do I just do it once? Don't know. Could create a lining for it when I needed to. I wonder if I've got enough fabric to get around. I think I'm going to do another dart. At the end of the day, as long as it's close-ish, they're like that. The vase in amongst it all will hold, hold its shape. So if it's a bit flippy floppy, the reason I'm going down the idea of having this vase inside too is... Um, I'm using these and there's a bit of weight there and if I fill it up with another 10 of those it might be um, a bit too too much pressure on the, the vessel so I thought well let's base it on a vase I've got a shape then to work with to some degree So that's three pleats, probably being a little bit tight. Gosh, it really absorbs some fabric, but that's okay. We can always put an extension piece in or I make that the next, yeah, let's make this guy the next pleat. I probably should have done it more evenly. I think I, I think I will. Right, okay, we've got a plan now. What I'm going to do is start that again, but join, join it first with a pleat. So if you're in Australia and you recognise these Bluemex vases and you've got one and you want to have a go, let me give you the measurements of my fabric. At the moment... I'm thinking that 14 inches will do the trick. Now, height-wise, I've just given myself a little extra because I might want to turn it in, I might trim it, I don't know. So my piece height-wise is 12 inches. So let's get a side seam on our, our little lady here. And we'll push it down towards the, the glass so that we can get a side seam and will be scant I think because I have a feeling it will use a bit of fabric in those pleats and we'll follow the line of our beautiful model her shapely hips and I think I'll just do some um, running stitch to put the little pleats in. You could use the sewing machine if you felt more comfortable wanting to make it very secure, but I think we'll be right. Now, I probably won't stitch this seam because I want to work on the piece with it flat. But what I will do is draw in the line. So when it comes to, you know, finishing my piece, See, now we've got a loose little dress, so let's, let's go to the opposite side, roughly. Pinch a little bit of fabric. And that's where the next pleat's going to be. So I have been a little bit more controlled with my placement here, so I'm quartering it. You could probably... You know, draw your lines like Sarah's divided it all up 
so that she knows her pleats are in the right spot. Be interested to see if I've sort of found that anyway. So we've taken another little bit out of her waist. So she's still complaining it's too loose because she wants to show off her waistline, this young lady. <laughs> Now we don't want it too tight because I can hear my grandmother saying, oh, I don't know. I don't think you should have your hair, um, neckline that low on your wedding dress, girl. You don't want to be showing off your boobs. But grandma, I really want to have cleavage on my wedding dress. Oh, wedding dresses aren't for cleavage. Whew, memory just came back. But I really want it. Can you just snip down a bit? It was like a piece of lace. And we were snipping down and she did like an inch. I can't remember now. She did like an inch and I wanted it three inches, four inches. I didn't even have boobs back then. I was as flat chested as they come. I was barely, barely blooming. I needed to get a little bit more weight on to get the, the boobs to come in. <laughs> so she was like, oh, oh. It was funny. My mum was just sitting there grinning. She probably had childhood memories of trying to get grandma to make her dresses that were a little bit, you know, tighter at the waist, lower at the bus line. <laughs> just cracks me up every time I think of that conversation. I did have a little bit of um, V in the neckline. There was certainly no cleavage showing, let me tell you, which was probably the right thing, you know, grandma knows best. There we go. We're happy with our model. She's feeling like she's cinched in at the waist. Yeah, that's pretty good. Even, I might even um, come back a little bit from where I've pinned because it's, it's fitting beautifully. But I might come back a bit because, you know, when we stitch and layer and carry on and, oh, I know the other thing. Am I going to have wadding in there? Some felt? I probably don't need to because I've got the vase being my structure. But if I didn't have the vase, I would need the batting or wadding or felt or something, then another layer of this. But I'm thinking because of the vase is going to be helping me. I, I think I'll be right just with Calico and it's like a sleeve going around this is not a bad way to go if you have something that's got a unique shape and you'd like to encase I love the fact that I can put flowers in it still oh, love it I have to have a think about what um, slow stitch foliage branches I could make see that's where it'll come together that's pretty good I think that'll work and then we can use that as the template for the base. Attach it when we're ready. So the bottom will look like that. This can tuck down inside. Of course, the vase would then push down. And I think I'd want that extra length because then the vase would find its way nicely in there. Can we have a go at doing that? Will it work? No, it won't because, <laughs> look, I can't get it out because I've pinned, okay, I need to make my vase not as tight-waisted. So there you go. What if I had, oh, I know. See, I like the tightness. I need this panel to clasp together. Because I have a narrow waist, you guys are probably sitting there going, she is not going to get this off the vase. Because I have a narrow waist and I can't pull past it, my closure, I will need a closure. Maybe some form of buttons or a tie. Or we'll come up with something here. So my piece is a panel, wraps around the vase when we're ready. So let's open this side seam. That's how we're going to do it. We've got to show our waist after all the begging for the seams just to give us a nice tight cinched in waist. We need to be able to get in, so we need a zipper. <laughs> there we go. There is my base. 
that's what I'm going to piece my fabrics onto. And I think I will let a little extra out, just, you know, be on the safe side. I then come along. No, then the base won't work. Yes, it will. Will it? No, not going to work. I've got engineering things I need to think about here. Does it need a base? Because if I have the base, it's going to keep it in. Does it need the base? If that is just a stitched finished edge there, and then this wraps around, buttons up, zips up, whatever it may be. It won't be a zip. It'll be buttons, hook and eye, something. And this is finished here, a little bit bigger than the vase. It's like a sock, open sock. So that's how my little piece would look. She's going to be an odd bod. And then that comes around. That comes around. The good thing is if this gets smaller, I can still add on fabric or trim or something to connect. And that is how she would. So it's like a cuff. There we go. Now we're starting to think about the engineering side of it. It's a cuff that goes around my vase. Got it. All right. So let's get rid of the vase. I'm going to leave all that excess fabric. And what I'm going to do now is stitch in my little pleats. Yep, okay. Needle and thread. So that's the plan. My vessel, is it then a vessel? Oh, am I breaking the rules? Is it a vessel? It's a wrap around a vessel. Oh, I might not be participating to the length though. Can I get a pass on the vessel and have a wrap around a vessel? I think the girls will be fine. Maybe I can figure out how to close it. See, if I close it in, I'm going to lose that nice hourglass shape. If I did... The cup here, this guy, that would work. Because down it would go. Oh, it's the vase that's the problem. Uh, so let's just work this dart in. Maybe I'll get to a point where it stands, no, it won't stand on its own accord because I don't have, no, I'm just thinking engineering. Ah, uh, we'll give it a go. I need some elastic in it, don't I? It's got to have an opening. Like you think about a dress and you've got your hips and your shoulders and a tiny little waist. You have some form of closure to get your body through the narrow. So, yeah, my design is flawed. <laughs> now that I've nutted all this out and I've come to the realisation that technically my... <laughs> All right, if you want to know how to make a vessel, watch the girls and um, go and find another YouTube person because this is technically a wrap around a vessel. I suppose it's a different take on it, but gee, it's not exactly a vessel. Maybe I should make a vessel as well just so that I feel like I haven't gone off the, off the plan there. So I'm just stitching this dart and I've come up a little bit from those pins. I just have a feeling it'll cinch in a little bit. And I think that extra little bit might help. And I can always lose it 
when I get to the attachment point for my, um, you know, bringing the sides together. Maybe that little bit extra too might allow me to slip it in. Maybe I sacrifice the shape a little bit. Look, it's not going to be perfect. I can't imagine. It'll be a bit... It might turn into a vessel yet. We'll see how we go. What an adventure we are on. How Corinne will sort this out. Love it when there's no plan and we can just improvise. You guys must find it amusing waiting for the penny to drop too. You're watching and going, she is not going to get that vase out of there due to her cinched in waistline. She's going to need a zip to get in and out of that little dress. That's hilarious. Maybe the back of it could be a little floppy. And they can get it in and out, but the front is flatter. Could change the shape of the vessel. Just thinking out aloud, guys. We'll see. We'll see. We've got the whole month to nut this out. If suddenly the videos just disappear out of the playlist, that means it's gone pear-shaped. <laughs> I'm doing a little backstitch here, if you're wondering, if you're new to all this whole shenanigans that we're all up to. Just a little backstitch. That'll be enough just to hold it. And I'm thinking, I, well, I was thinking of trimming that excess fabric out. That's a bit of an instinct there. But I don't know, maybe I'm going to need that as a bit of structure. I might leave it. And it'll sort of, you know, uh, corsets where we had boning in them. That there might help with a little bit of that. Okay, so our little dart is in, pins are gone, so let's just grab that vessel. If I use the word vessel when referring, is it a straight dart? Yeah, no, it's not so bad, she'll be right. Yeah, see that little bit of fabric in there, I don't think will go astray. It'll just help bulk it up. That little guy, that little guy. So we've got four darts and plenty of fabric to do what we need to do. Let's say this gets more cylindrical with a slight indent, then maybe that'll slide out. Mm, we'll see. We'll see. Who knows? It'd be really cool to have some buttons and that down the side. Even if they didn't open and I could work out how to do this without it being an open and a closed scenario, just to give the look of buttons down the side would be a nice detail, but it's fake. But if it needs to be there, due to the shape of my vase, I've got wriggle room. Yeah. I'll definitely need to pad the bottom of the vase so that the flowers are lifted. I've got plenty of room to make other other um, flowers and foliage, whatever, for my vase. I have a feeling I will be able to stitch it all closed and be totally vessel. If I can just slip that vase through and it still has that nice shape. But then, you know, once I start layering fabric on, maybe the shape will just disappear to some degree. Due to the thickness of everything, slow stitches, you know, we're creating this thick layer of yummy imagery and lace and so I don't know who knows 
Stay tuned for the ride. Goodness knows where it's going. Either way, I will finish my flower project. I will have something to put my flower project in. And if someone graces me with a nice bunch of flowers, my husband's just entered the room and is looking at me, hint, hint, I could potentially pop them in this and have a stitched piece. Well, I might leave it at that. I've lost track of time because fudge interfered with the whole process of filming. So I'm not sure how long I was filming before all hang broke loose. See, I've pinched another little bit of space there. Just in case you want to enclose it. Wriggle room. Give yourself a little bit of wriggle room. I'm definitely not going to trim out the excess because I think that's going to help with a bit of structure because I don't have wadding. This bunny is thick. It's got a bit of a velvety feel to it. Isn't he gorgeous? We can thread paint him. Oh, ho, ho, ho. a bunny on my bars. Vessel. Okay, maybe there's a, a, a few mil in the fact that you can slide it in and out or not. I don't think so, it's pretty curved. Maybe it'll be more cylindrical. Who knows? It's a problem to solve another day. We're off and racing. Let's just get ourselves a beautifully decorated stitched panel featuring the hair and then um, we'll go from there but I think we're close how far do I go probably could have drawn some lines for myself but I haven't well I'm going to toddle off this is boring viewing my husband's just sat down in the lounge just off from my room with a Milo and I can hear his spoon clicking. If you're wondering what that clicking sound is, that's a Milo and I'm now thinking I need a Milo. Can you hear it? <laughs> you're doing that deliberately, aren't you? Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Did you hear that? So I'm thinking I need a Milo. I'll do my little magic knot here so that my needle doesn't fall out and I waste time. Life's too short to be threading the needle all the time. This little knot has just been a game changer. Just enough to hold it. Okay, look, look how crooked that is. Oh my Probably should have drawn a line. I'll just finish this dart, then I will definitely go. I'll do the next dart. And then I might mark some measurements with a pencil of the vase. So when I come back and start placing my fabrics down to embellish my panel, um, I know, you know, where I am. Am I sort of the same? Yeah, that's enough. All right, guys, you guys have a great weekend. And I'll probably post a video probably Wednesday-ish next week. Oh, I've got a shocking knot. Probably Wednesday will be my next one where we can piece our work so we've got two darts in and I'd say I've picked up a little bit of fabric again which won't go astray especially if I do decide to loosen up the cinching in and make it a proper vessel that the vase slides in and out of which would be pretty cool but then it would look really cool with a bit of a, a claspy something anyway 
decision for another day. All right, guys, look after yourselves and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Hi, guys, I'm back. Okay, I've made a few decisions. While I was stitching that final pleat, I've fitted it around with the closure happening here. And I've decided I love the shape. So the vase has to stay inside, which is okay when it's fake flowers or dried flowers or anything that doesn't involve water. So I'm okay with that. And I think if I decide to put real flowers in there, I could probably very carefully put some water in, put the flowers in, remove water, you know, because I believe I'd be able to push this down to empty my vase. So I think it'll still work. I really love the shape. It's, I don't know, I, I really, really like it. So I will continue on the path of making this a enclosed vessel. So I've turned the bottom in at the moment. I will create a bottom for that at some point and attach it. It will be a permanent. The vase will help with the structure. So when I put things in that are a little bit heavy, like these knitting needles, like picture another 10 flowers in here, there'll be a, quite a lot of weight from them. And having that vase in there is a bit of a sturdy uh, file safe, so to speak, um, I think's good. I can still use it with water if I was very, very careful. So... That's what I'm going to do, guys. So in the meantime, I can decorate my piece, my panel. Everything's darted in to some degree. I can cinch it in even more when I need to. I'm going to use that turned in edge as my edge. All the way around so I can bring my fabric right up to there I won't piece the fabric down today I'm um, going to just finish tacking this and I could probably you know snip that to get that to lay flat but I'm not too concerned because that's all going to add a bit of structure to my piece and I need to just double check my top edge. I don't want to see the vase. So if I lose a little bit of height down here when the base goes on, I think I'm going to need every little bit of that. Maybe bring it to there. So I've now got my template is what I'm thinking. And just turn this edge in. It can be a little bit gathered and puckered, and that's I'm okay with that because that will give it a real textury feel. It doesn't need to be flat as long as I can maintain that hourglass on our little girl here. And what I might do is run a stitch along that edge. Let's just double check it. Nothing worse than you do all that hard work and then you find that it's just not quite right. I think that's going to be pretty darn good. And worst case comes, we can add an extension piece, but that is going to be pretty good. Yep. So those measurements I gave you, if you're an Aussie girl and you do have this vase, they might be everywhere. I'm sure they are. Um, that sizing I gave you would be pretty darn close. And then, like I said, the little base we can do um, when I'm ready at the end. I just so want to make it a proper vessel. Doesn't mean that I won't make it look like it opens. Like I sort of like the idea of 
some fancy buttons down that side, some vintage buttons. So it looks like it's been wrapped and stitched as a bit of a feature. No idea how long this video is because I'm back. <laughs> so this is just about putting a little running stitch there just to hold that edge down. I have it measured. I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. If it's not, I can always add um, some fabric. Feels like I'm making a corset. I'm just doing a running stitch here. I'm not going to the degree that the that was done. Probably could have got away with a running stitch on those little darts anyway. Oh, now I've got a knot. Seriously. <sighs> I should go and get that Milo. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, I didn't even think of that. If you're in a country that doesn't have, oh, look, seriously, this knot's staying. Oh, oh, got it. Um, we have a, a maize, a grain, maize is different, called Milo. And that's, I believe, the core ingredient. We used to grow Milo as a kid on the original farm. It's a real chocolatey brown head to the top of the um, plant. Looks a little bit like sugar cane. Not as tall from my memory. Let's Google it. Make sure I'm telling the story right. Goodness me. Memory is not as good as it used to be. Milo plant. Note. There you go. There we go. So that's the drink. That's the the plant. And uh, it's probably about oh, 90 centimetres tall from memory. I remember walking through the Milo and um, it wasn't over my head as a kid. And then a big harvester would come and harvest it and take the, the grain away. It's another name for it. Um, is millet by the looks of it. We used to call it Milo as a kid. Sorghum. Another name. I think that name applies to quite a few grains. I think sorghum is more the 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 product at the end that you would feed to cattle. And that can be different types of grains. But oh, don't quote me on that. Those of you married to farmers out there may be able to set me straight. I was a daughter of a farmer, so did the girl listen all the time to what she was told? Probably not. And that was a long time ago. I sort of, I mean, was pretty young when we were growing those types of crops. We then went more into loosen. We were dairy farmers and small crops, as in vegetables, onions, pumpkins, and all of the above, cabbages, lettuce, broccoli depending on the season. But Dad would always have pastures that would be uh, extra food for the cattle, especially if it was a, a dry summer or a dry winter. You, you just need that extra, and they can't live on hay alone to make good milk. So other, other things were planted to, you know, strip feed, they used to call it, where you'd put up a little temporary fence and the cattle would come in and have a munch little fences to stop them, then take them away, especially loosen, and they could strip feed. So through the winter months, you had plenty of, gosh, how do I get onto these tangents, seriously? And then the loosen could also be turned into loosen hay if you were storing it for a bad dry season. But prior to all that, those paddocks when I was a kid was Milo. I remember the cattle would be, after harvest, the, the cattle would be led into the paddock too and they'd munch it all down. But then we stopped doing Milo and I don't know why. I 
I presume, I'll have to ask Dad. I presume Dad was selling it to a market somewhere because there'd be a big truck come and take it away. Maybe the price was not good enough anymore for it and he then went into Lucen and Oats, those types of, I don't know, I'll have to find out. All because Gaz sat down with a Milo and started clicking his glass with his spoon as he mixed it in. Oh my goodness, isn't it funny how the smallest memories pop back? Like you smell something and suddenly it reminds you, like Vegemite, which is like an Australian, Australian spread, that black, weird tasting yeast, salty spread we put on our toast ever so thinly. Everyone seems to try a spoonful of it and then go, ooh, that's horrible. Well, yeah, it is when you have a spoonful of it. But the smell of Vegemite, every time I smell hot, warm butter melting in Vegemite, I think of cold, frosty mornings where I'm walking to the dairy to help out with the cattle and I've got a couple slices of Vegemite on toast in my mitt, <laughs> in my hand. Every time I smell it, I think of that. Well, I'll just whip to the end of this. This is going to be an interesting project. Thanks, girls. My goodness, the time that you girls put into this project, when you have very busy lives, is just so appreciated by so many of us. So big thanks. Sending a hug your way, girls. And your mum, Judy, who's back up. And I'm sure throwing in lots of ideas as well. It's a real collaboration. So the Roxy Girls, Roxy Creations, Roxy Creations by Sarah. So if you've just stumbled onto this random video, you're thinking, who is she talking about? See, we take for granted that we all know each other. So every so often, you've got to stop yourself and say, well, this Susanna I talk about is Vintage Blend Studios, Tia, Calm Creations. Like, it just goes on and on. There's heaps of girls out there we all refer to and chat about. But we forget that you're sitting there maybe for the first time and going, oh, who's that? Where do I find them? So, yeah. I apologise if you are a newbie and you're thinking, oh, my goodness, look at this. I've got to make myself a vessel that goes around a vase that you can't remove because the engineering wasn't properly thought through. But now we're compromising, but we have solved it. All right, there we go. We're ready. Ready for phase two. There's my panel in all its glory with its little tucks and pleats and Mr. Bunny. All right, guys, I'm going to dodge off. Got to get myself a Milo and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.